Yo, what's up guys? This is Stu Hill with Angelus Brand and today I'm going to get you faded for summer 16. Alright guys, so uh, today we're doing some uh, Hirachi cross trainers. What we're going to do with this Hirachi is we're going to actually do a fade from uh, red all the way uh, down to a violet. What we'll use is 50% paint and 50% uh, too soft. I'm using an airbrush today. You can actually use a brush as well. I just choose to use an airbrush because when you are doing a fade, one thing that's nice about using an airbrush is if you complete the whole fade in, in one process while the paint is still wet, the fade looks a lot cleaner. You have a better gradient when it comes through. So that's just my preference. Uh, let me start masking this guy off. The fabric on this Hirachi shoe is very sensitive. It's very delicate. So you want to try to avoid getting any kind of masking tape on it. You want to take your nail and make sure you lock the tape in. That's extremely important when you're airbrushing. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you'll have a lot of little pockets and uh, that's, that's how overspray gets in there. So I got this Hirachi trainer all taped up here, as you guys can see. So this is how I'm going to attack this shoe. The strategy for this shoe, I'll start the portion here with red. I'll continue with orange. I'll stop and not apply the yellow and I'm going to start with the back end after that because yellow guys is the brightest color out of the group so if I put red orange then yellow and then I hit green on top of that because we're in such a tight little space this airbrush might speckle green on top of the yellow and, and it's very hard to reverse that so I'm going to wait till the end to apply this yellow, okay? And that's a good rule of thumb is you want to apply your dark colors first. Uh, with that said, guys, I'm going to start loading my airbrush here and I'll be using fire red half and I'll be using half too soft. And it, it's a fabric medium. It's, it's vital for us to do it on this because we want to keep that softness to it. When I'm shooting the airbrush, my objective is to not get it into the toe box, right? And since I've taped the toe box from this side, I don't want to shoot into a possible crease where there can get, there's a hole there and there's an overspray that can actually creep underneath the tape. So what I'm actually doing is I'm reversing the shoe that way and I'm shooting with the grain of the tape going the same way, okay? I'll now taper off. The, the toe box a little bit so it gives it a little bit of a blend and I'll introduce the next color which will be an orange. There's actually not even a need for me to completely clean the airbrush. I actually would enjoy that it keeps a little bit of red into the orange and then shoot that together. Just give it some quick light strokes and again try to stay away from trying to get into the creases of the tape. This time I'm really like concentrating on trying to get inside of these holes again in the toe box area. That'll help uh, develop the brightness and the saturation that you want of an orange. And we'll taper off right at the end so we can introduce the yellow. Again, I went a little conservative there. But you guys can see here that um, my first layer is just, just a small end of the toe cap here and the orange is a little bit bigger, but it's okay because now I'm gonna blend the red back in and I'll, I'll, I'll add some red on both sides here too, just to give that nice uh, fade effect. So uh, back to that fire red this time, guys. Because I'm going to be adding it where the orange and the red meet, it doesn't even matter if I clean the gun or not. Again, that'll be a, kind of like a happy medium between the two. As I let that orange right there 
kind of settle out. I'm going to start with the back end now, which will be the violet, or in this case, neon paradise purple. Guns cleaned out. We should be good to go. And I'm pretty much done here. I'm just kind of giving it last couple of rounds, making sure that I saturated the the Paradise Purple nicely into the back heel there. With that said, guys, I'm gonna jump into the purple next. Purple is one of the darker colors, so you want to be very, very careful with purple. I tell you guys that because if this purple splatters into like this yellow area, greenish area, you're gonna have to go back and actually paint that area white first and then paint in whatever color that it was supposed to be. In this case, again, I, I have not uh, cleaned my gun out. I did, though, clean my gun out when I went from the orange over to the violet because those are so different in color and spectrum that you don't want to have, uh, you know, orange speckles or something like that on, on the violet side. So, one to one, too soft and sapphire. Mix this guy up. Again, I'm transitioning from a purple to a sapphire blue. And since they're so close in color, I actually didn't even need to unload and completely clean my, my brush out. Remember at the end, guys, you just want to taper off the blue with just a little bit of blue. Be a little bit softer on that, on that portion. This is my second layer here of blue. And what we're going to do next is transition in the green. It's going to be paired right next to the sapphire blue here. Quite a color difference here. So, you know, again, that's why I cleaned out my airbrush. Let's shake up the paint a little bit and get going. As the blue is still settling, guys, and it's still wet, perfect opportunity for you to layer a little bit of green on top of it. It's almost like they'll, they'll be mixing and blending together, which will give you a better contrast on the fade. So uh, next step we're going to do is, um, the, fi the final coat actually, is it's the yellow. We're going to be using a tour yellow. Uh, the great part about the yellow being the last color and the lightest color to, to shoot is, it's also the hardest to cover other colors up that are darker. So that's, that's the reason why I, I save yellow for the end. Let's start uh, unmasking this guy off. It's still wet, so just I'm going to be very cautious of how I unmask things. Now taking off all of the masking tape on, on the shoe, uh, anything that was hit on the white portion that I didn't want any paint, for example, any kind of overspray, I just used uh, some leather preparer and deglazer and I ended up just taking, for example, a Q-tip, dipping it in, and as you take the Q-tip, not just swiping it off, but swiping it and then also rotating the Q-tip so that way you're taking the paint or overspray off of that white part of the shoe and also continuing to move the, the Q-tip in a fashion where you're not gonna streak the paint across the, the white portion. Guys, let's hit this with the heat gun. Uh, that'll, again, help it heat set. It'll keep the texture soft and it'll be wearable. This is the finished product. It is a Harachi Cross Trainer with complete rainbow fade. We used a number of different uh, colors to this and I think the fade came out pretty reasonably nice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. With that said, I'm out. Peace.